My gran was being stalked by a crazy woman with no life. As the title suggests, this is not something that happened to myself but to my grandmother who I call Gran. This also happened recently last week. I will update you all if anything else comes up. My Gran decides to take a trip to Burke's outlet, so she does. She heads into the store, and only a few seconds later she is being called out by a woman shouting, Hey, you! She turns to the woman in question, who had apparently ran after her and into the outlet. The woman is probably between the ages of 40 to 45, my, while my grandmother is 65. As soon as this woman approaches my Gran, she was instantly in her face and shouting at her. My Gran is confused at first, but soon pieces together this woman's disjointed yelling. Apparently, this woman had been following my Gran for three weeks. We don't know if she knows where my Gran lives or any other personal details about her, but every time she would catch my Gran's distinctive bright emerald Oldmobile driving about, she would follow her around. Why was she following my Gran? Well, apparently she thought my Gran had cut her off three weeks prior, and she had been following her to find an opportunity to scream at her about it. She kept mentioning the name of a town that's about 40 or so minutes away from us. We're not sure if she meant that's where it took place, or where she thought my Gran lived. This struck my Gran as odd because during that time, she had been in the hospital for some minor surgery, and my mother had the car. My mother had no reason to go into this town, and hadn't even been there. Anyways, my gran told her that she didn't believe it to be true for these reasons, but apologized if she accidentally cut her off. The woman continues to yell at my gran, telling her it had to be her because of her car. Oldsmobiles are uncommon nowadays, but it's not impossible to find them anymore. At this point, the woman was starting to gather attention from nearby shoppers and clerks due to her scene. My gran, the badass, told her simply that this was the only apology she was going to get and that she'd better be on her way. If she came into Burke's to shop, then she suggested to do so and leave her the hell alone. The woman persisted, to what reason we're still unsure, and tried to block off my gran when she tried to walk away. My gran warned her to get out of her face and asked the woman if she knew what the term stalking meant. She told the woman in no uncertain terms that she honestly felt sorry for the woman if this hurt her so badly, that she felt the need to stalk her for three weeks and felt she must have, have have no life. Two more times, my gran had to warn her to get out of her face, and my gran was getting very close to getting into a fist fight with this woman. She started to look around, and my gran felt the woman realized she was about to ask someone to call the police. That's when the woman finally left her, and walked deeper into the store. A few moments later, she hurried out with apparently no intention to shop. My grandma sort of laughed an embarrassed laugh, and told a woman at the front desk that she was going to hang around for a bit because she didn't want to go outside and risk further confrontation. When she finally left, the woman was gone, and there seemed to be no sign of her doing anything to her car. That was good. She strolled around for a bit to see if anyone was following her before finally driving home. Crazy ass bitch who felt the need to stalk a 65 year old woman for three weeks under the assumption that she cut you off. I hope my grand does not meet you again you might not like the outcome. A crazy eyed man enters our gate and sells us unknown meat. I've, I've been a silent lurker in this sub for quite a while now, and I've been wanting to share my encounter but I'm a really bad storyteller, so please bear with me. And my grammar since English isn't exactly my first language, I am still confused if this is the right sub for this. This happened way back in 2013, I was 17 years old then. Because of my parents' constant arguments, my parents decided to go their separate ways prior to this, so we ended up living with my mom. I had a younger brother and an older sister. We live in a neighborhood where it is not necessary to lock your front gate, nor close your front doors, since everyone pretty much knows everyone else. It was still early in the evening, about 6pm. Mom usually comes home by 8pm. Now it is important to know that we didn't lock the front gate, although it is closed, and our front door is wide open. We do this all the time, so the breeze would come in, and we don't worry about it because we have a screen door which is unlocked too. 
My brother and I were just watching TV when suddenly we heard our gate slammed open. It was made of metal with this huge chain dangling on it. I immediately jumped up off the couch and stood in front of the screen door to see who came in and slammed the gate that loud. It takes about 8 to 10 steps to get to our front door from the gate. And I swear on that split second, where I jumped from the couch towards the screen door, the man was already in front of me. Only the screen door between us. He looked to be around 30 to 40 years old, only wearing a white and very dirty tank top. It was ripped in some areas and looked like he rolled around the mud or something. Was carrying a bloody cellophane. His hands were bloody, and he had that crazy look in his eyes. He was also panting, like he ran all the way to our house. I was terrified, and my hand is already on the screen door's handle. I was hold holding it closed. I knew right then and there that he's not supposed to be at our house at all. I didn't want him to see me lock it, since that might provoke him. I didn't say anything. I just freaking froze in front of him. So he said, I'm a friend of your dad. He ordered this, and he wanted me to bring it over. He then lifted the bloody cellophane so I can see it from eye level. There was meat inside. I have no idea what meat it is, except that it smelled so bad. It just wandered in 20 pesos. Two kilos, he added. That's about 236 if converted. I can feel my hand shaking at this point. I didn't believe a single thing he had said, so I told him, no, we're okay. Tell my dad we don't want to buy it, thank you. And I locked the door. And I still held it closed, since it's just a barrel bolt lock. And I knew that if he even tries to jiggle the handle, the barrel lock would move, and it would be open in a jiffy. He didn't say anything anymore, and just kind of looked to the side. Then he looked back at me. I saw him put the cellophane down on the floor, and calmly walk back to our gate, and then he ran away. As soon as he was gone, our neighbor, he's just a few years older than me, approached me, and asked who that was. I told him we had no idea. I looked at the meat, and it was soaked with blood, dark blood, and we were both terrified, since it's already dark, and we just want to be inside the safety of our homes. He offers to throw the meat away from me, and I ended up cleaning the blood from our front step, left from that goddamn thing. I called my mom and told her what happened, and she told us to immediately lock the gates and to close both doors until she gets home. We told her dad about it too, and he said he would never order something from someone crazy looking like that. The whole neighborhood knew about it, and from then on, we always made sure our gates and homes are closed. We asked around, and they said it was actually just a man, who was probably high on cocaine or turned crazy, and was seen a few times around the area. They said he had a family, and they abandoned him for having an unstable mind, and was seen wandering around ever since. Up until now, I still do not know what kind of crazy meat that was or where he got it from. My sister and my neighbor told me it was probably a stray dog or a cat, but they probably just told me that to reassure me I did not see human meat that night. Since it took me a long time to get over that incident, I didn't ask my mom about it again, and my mom told me not to worry about it, and that she'll make sure it'll never happen again, and I tried blocking it all out of my mind ever since. Reading stories here made me remember how terrifying it is to meet unstable people like this. So, crazy meat man, let's never meet again. Crazy Cat Lady just came here to share my story. Not overly long, but creepy nonetheless. I'm a 21-year-old female with a young son. I live in a small town where not a lot happens. But you know, the usual drug dealers and though, it's usually just pot you tend to steer clear. While I was home alone one night, I was just getting ready to prepare dinner for my son and myself. My partner is out of town and not being too worried. I had the curtains open and door unlocked. I'm busy getting myself ready, utensils and ingredients, etc., when I hear a knock on the door, followed by a croaky cough. I answer the door. Usually, it's just older ladies wanting to talk about Jesus and their religion. Standing at the door is a middle-aged lady, long black hair. She's on the larger side, but looks unkept and definitely like she's on something. I ask her if she's okay, and she starts full-blown yelling, HOW DARE YOU LET YOUR CAT ROAM! He got my cat pregnant now. I have a kin to feed and I can't afford smokes. I'm just blown away and barely mutter excuse me. 
before she continues to go off her nut. Your cat got my cat pregnant, and you need to give me money to feed it. I politely inform her that my male cat is desexed and never wanders. He does use the toilet outside, but always comes in after he's done. I shut the door and locked it. I hear a tug at the door, thinking that she just kicked it. And up the driveway, she walks ranting about stupid sluts. Once I'm sure she's gone, I open the door for my persistent puppy, who keeps sniffing and whining, because I assume he needs to pee. But at the door is a tinykin. So, crazy cat lady, let's never meet again. When I almost got burned alive by a crazy guy in the woods. About three years ago, I went on my first wildfire. I just recently become a certified firefighter, and I finally got sent out on a two-week deployment. Without being too, too specific, let's just say the fire was deep in north-central Idaho. It had immensely steep mountains and ultra-dense forests. I really didn't have any idea of what to expect. You always hear about wildfires on the news, but it wasn't anything like what actually happens. I expected to show up and be seen as a hero. It turns out the area I went to was very, very familiar with wildfires. Over decades, many of the locals actually grew to hate the firefighters and federal government. Many locals felt that the government was exploiting the fires for money, so they purposefully would take a long time fighting the fires. One city nearby blames the government for allowing a fire to burn down more than 50 homes. The first day we were told to stay away from the locals because they would often approach as friendly but then become confrontational, even violent. On our way to the fire lines, there were signs hung on trees saying things like, Turn back now, or hope you burn in hell. Needless to say, it was a little unsettling. We continued for a few days without issue. A few days later, we got assigned to new area. We had a rather large engine with lots of water and supplies, so we normally just patrolled the fire borders to make sure the fire didn't jump the defensive lines. One day, an old man comes driving up on his ATV and starts asking questions about the fire. He informed us that he was a nearby resident and just wanted to be updated. We told him the general information about the fire. He thanked us and was about to drive away when he turned around. He told us not to go up Red Leaf Road as old Joe lived up there and hated firefighters. We got placed on structure protection. We were going to go home to home and help repair them because the fire was coming dangerously close. We then went to our assigned house. We actually waited outside the gate for a few minutes to get a little game plan going. We drove up to the house to find a man waiting with a gun on his lap. We carefully approached him. It was the man from the ATV earlier. Apparently some people dressed as firefighters came to his house earlier, demanding his evacuation. He left his home, but the people were fake firefighters and had robbed him while he was gone. Luckily, we had a massive truck to help prove our legitimacy, so he kindly put away his gun. We helped him prep his house, as we did. He told us all these stories about old Joe, who lived at the very top of the lane. He said Joe was a big-time conspiracy theorist, who had probably hundreds of guns and was famous for his hate for the government. I know it sounds straight out of a movie, some old anti-government guy living in the mountains with tons of guns, but it was all true. Old Joe was secretive, even amongst his neighbors. Nobody really knew exactly who he was. He said neighbors only really spoke to him in passing on the narrow dirt roads. They just knew he was shooting guns all day and always preaching about his hate for the government. A few days later, we were fighting on the front lines. Each area has a commander who is in charge. Before we went out for the day, our commander briefed us. He actually mentioned old Joe and said that nobody wants to go near his property. He also told us about our evacuation point for if the fire were to get out of control. It happened to be a nearby rock quarry. I was digging some fire line when a loud tone went out over the radio. And all units in the area were asked to evacuate. 
After arriving, we were told someone spotted a new fire forming below everyone on the main fire line, including me. This is especially dangerous, because fire moves uphill very quickly. It was also so smoky that we could barely see 30 feet in front of us. A fire could easily surround you without you knowing it all. We waited for an hour or so before the commander asked for a volunteer engine to go scout the new fire start. An engine crew that we had befriended volunteered and shortly after departed. We then waited for what felt like two or three hours. Finally, the volunteer engine crew came back. They briefed the commander and then came back towards my crew, Ricky, a crew member who I was friends with, hopped out of his truck with a sickly look on his face. He was pale and almost seemed frail as he stepped out. I asked him what was up. He said when they found the new fire. It was just outside a large clearing. They got out to investigate and found a freshly cut trail with footprints in the mud. They looked around further and could easily see that it had been started with a long line of gasoline. Someone had been in there recently. A large line of gas was poured so that it would surround the fire crews above and catch them off guard. They quickly hopped back into their engine and hauled ass back to the quarry. It wasn't ever to be proven, but everyone was sure that it was old Joe in a failed attempt to burn us 20-something firefighters alive. Thankfully, a very keen firefighter had noticed a small orange glow below him through the heavy smoke. Had he not spotted it in time, the narrow and steep roads needing to escape would have been likely cut off. The gasoline lines were very carefully placed to cut off our escape. I was scarred for a very long time afterwards. There is something extremely unsettling, knowing that someone was plotting your death, especially when you are completely unaware. Was Joe watching me? Was he hidden in the woods nearby waiting for his plan to unfold? Luckily, I left a few days later never to return, and hopefully never to meet old Joe. Insane Beggar on the Loose. Hi there, first time poster. I've been lurking on subreddit for just this week. I have an experience that might fit here. I live in the Philippines and beggars can be seen almost everywhere. Some are harmless and some aren't. There was even a beggar who kept pinching me until I gave her some money and a child punched me on the leg. This happened when I was still in college. So I was around 19 at the time. It was a Saturday afternoon and I was with my friend, Jessa. We had to stop by somewhere. Jessa needed to claim a debt from someone who was a street vendor. So they were just talking and I was behind her for about one and a half meters. Then this woman, beggar, walks up to me. She was a bit hunchback. She had lots of missing teeth and a bit smaller than me. I'm about 5'2". She was begging for money, I guess. I said no, since I had no loose change on me. Then the woman suddenly just punched me on my left arm. Not hard, but it still hurt. By then, I got scared and walked over to my friend and told her that we should go. I looked back and the beggar was still there looking and smiling at me. Right after Jessa was done with her friend, she started to go the direction where the beggar was. So I pulled her and told her to follow me. I was already freaked out, so we tried to cross the streets. As I looked at the beggar, she was crossing the street too, but still looking at me. There was a lot of tricycles and cars while I was crossing the streets. The beggar, however, wasn't able to cross the street right away. Knowing she's still following me, I went to the eatery, hoping she won't follow me inside. There was no glass windows on the eatery, so inside I explained everything to Jessa. Then we both looked outside and she was peeking inside, still smiling. I'll never forget that creepy smile. I knew she was toying with me. She'd hide then appear again. I asked the people that worked at the eatery if they had a back door, but they said they didn't have one. All I got was... She might be chasing you because you're pretty. I thought, great, that was helpful. I know they're trying to cheer me up, but I couldn't especially on the situation I'm in. We waited for a few more minutes, and the beggar was nowhere in sight. As soon as I was sure it was clear, I told Jessa that we should run out. But before I got a reply out of her, I got out of there and ran. Ran as far as I can. Jessa followed me from behind. We stopped and decided to calm down at a McDonald's. I'm still freaking out and kept looking outside the window, thinking she might be there. McDonald was not really that far from where we had seen her. After a while, I calmed down and went home. Fast forward to more than a year later, 
I was out with a friend of mine. We were walking. I forgot where we were headed exactly, but I was asking her about this incident with the beggar. Then as we turned a corner, someone spat on the floor in front of us. As I looked up, there she was! The beggar that chased me. My friend and I stepped aside and continued walking. The good thing was, she didn't follow us. When I described her to my friends, some of them have actually seen her around. She would pull on your hair while you're, you're on the jeepney. She would throw rocks at people. We've, we've, we've also heard that she broke a beer bottle and tried to harm my friend's brother. There are rumors that she was from another city and she was transported here since they didn't want her in that city. This was the experience that stirred my fear of beggars and the streets. Breaking down my door is bad enough, but jacking off on my window. This happened about six years ago, when I was 20 and living in a shared flat while at university. I had a job in a gig venue dive bar, about a 30 minute walk from my flat. I typically walked or cycled to and from work, despite finishing at 1 or 2 a.m. or later. The city I was in was pretty small, and my walk took me through crowded well-lit areas, so my only issue was walking home at night were generally dodging drunk people throwing up outside bars or getting accosted by people I know trying to get me to go for a beer. One night I was on my way home and about 15 minutes away when a group of six or seven guys who were walking down the street in the opposite direction started catcalling me and shouting at me to join them for a drink. Not a totally uncommon experience. So to start with, I just laughed and waved them off. When they kept persisting and started to get ruder and louder in their shouts, I flipped them the bird and told them to fuck off. They shouted at me a bit more, but kept walking in their direction. And I realized they've given up and carried on towards home. A few minutes later, I stopped to fix my shoelace and realized that the same group of guys was now following me. But now they were completely silent. I was apprehensive, but not too nervous at this point. I naively thought maybe they changed their minds about where they were going, even though they had done an about turn and now were headed away from the bars and clubs like me. I picked up some speed and kept towards my flat and rang my flatmate to see if she was home. She wasn't. When I got to the end of my street, I turned off the main road and started running, hoping to get inside before they reached the road and saw where I lived. I thought I'd made it, but when I reached the door, I looked back and saw them gathered at the end of the street looking at me. Now the building was an old Victorian house, which had been converted into flats. Pretty, pretty common for the area. Ours was on the ground floor, and our living room in my flatmate's bedroom looked out onto the streets with big bay windows onto a little front garden. The building wasn't in the best repair. The main door into the stairwell had warped, so it no longer locked, just shoved closed, and the building manager had been refusing to fix it. Anyways, I was inside the flat at this point, grabbing a beer and telling my flatmate's cat about the creepy guys that followed me. I went through to the living room and just about passed out. They were in our garden and the living room curtains were open. They were pointing and waving at me and laughing. I had no idea what to do, so backed into the hallway out of sight, at which point they started banging on the window and shouting. This went on for five minutes while I debated whether to phone the police or not. Then the banging stopped and I heard more laughing. I looked out and one of the guys had dropped his trousers and was jacking off in front of the window. When he saw me, he started pressing himself against the glass and shouting about all the things he'd do if I went outside to join them. I then realized a few of his friends were missing. It became quickly clear that they had shoved open the broken main door and were now slamming against the door to my flat. At this point, the cat is going completely insane. I'm furious and terrified and had no idea what to do. I sat along grabbing a very heavy frying pan and positioning myself in the hallway where I can keep an eye on the door while I call the police. The police bless them, turned up within five minutes, and as soon as they saw the lights, the guys took off, and just as well, because it turned out the door jam had started to splinter. There were also some nice gifts left on the living room window. As far as I know, they never got caught. I can't really bring myself to think about what might have happened if the police had taken any longer and the guys had gone through the door. So, guys who tried to break into my home and jacked off on my window? Let's not meet again. 
but thanks for giving me a reminder lesson about personal safety, and for giving me great ammo to get the building manager to fix our front door. Don't enjoy cleaning the window, though, and never had a curtains open after dark again. Man in a Peach Blazer I was walking my dog late last night. I usually walk him very late because of my crazy work schedule. So walking him between 10pm and 2am is pretty normal for me and sometimes I do quite often. I live in a city with a high crime rate, but I live on the edge where it borders a quiet town, so I've never felt any fear walking outside late until last night. Last night, Lewis was extra excited because I worked a double and had him brought him a full walk in over 24 hours. Once I got a block or so away from my house, I saw a person walking. I thought it was a woman because they had long hair and peach pink 80s looking blazer on. I figured it was a drunk or high woman walking home or to a store. I figured I'd keep my distance just in case. It didn't take long for me to realize it was actually a man, a quite tall man. He was walking in the middle of the road towards an intersection. I was trying to keep a slow pace so I didn't catch up with him, yet I felt like slowly he was getting closer for about 15 seconds. I lost sight of him as I was walking by a few of the cars there. When I walked ahead further, I saw that I was yet again closer, but now he stopped just standing in the middle of a dead intersection. I stopped and just stared, thinking maybe my view has warped and he was actually just walking. As I'm trying to convince myself this, I realized he was facing me. He was fucking facing me, looking directly at me. No matter what I did, I couldn't focus on his face. All I could see was his long, straggly hair and the big, sharp, edged shoulders of that insane-looking blazer. Right when I thought it couldn't get any more creepy, it did. He started marching towards me. He was picking up his feet high and slowly and marching towards me. I, I was in shock. I froze and just stared. All I wanted to know was, is this really happening or am I over-exaggerating it? I had to wait and see if it was just going to get creepier. It did. He just kept marching. Lewis is a small dog and he's fast. I put his leash back towards the house and we started running. We ran our asses all the way to the house where I had to pick up Lewis because he's afraid of stairs. I ran up the stairs, came in the house closed the door and locked it. I was out of breath, telling my fiancé about it. We turned the lights off and looked out the window. We didn't see anything else. I was scared all, all night last night, and a little creeped out this morning. I'm a horror story narrator, and one of the creepiest stories I've ever heard on here is The Smiling Man. The encounter was so, the encounter was so similar to that, because why? And what the fuck? So, man in the peach blazer, Let's not meet. Tree climbing maniac. Okay, so this only happened about an hour ago and I'm still shaking. Before I tell you what happened, I'll give you a little bit of background. I live in Sydney, Australia, in a pretty dodgy neighborhood, so I'm quite used to creepy and not so very nice people, but this experience is the worst I've ever had. My house backs onto a park with quite a few trees, but they are spaced out so it's not like bushland. It's a nice park with a walkway, and all the houses in my street line up against it, making a sort of long wall of house backyard fences, if that makes sense. Because of this, I have a very small backyard, anyways, on to the story. I was just about to go to bed, and I finished locking my front door and the windows. All I had to do was lock the back door, but before I did, I decided to open it and have a look outside, just to check the weather and see if my two cats were out and lying around. I was looking around when a faint flicker of light from one of the treetops caught my eye. It was weird considering there are no lights in the park, and I got worried that there might be a fire starting. I decided to take a closer look. But as soon as I stepped outside, the now clearly visible flame vanished. 
The flame had come from the tree closest to my back fence, only a few feet away, so it was possible to see shapes and movements even in the darkness. I was certain it was from a lighter. Someone had climbed up the tree and was either lighting a smoke or trying to start a fire. This scared the living shit out of me, because if he was just lighting a cigarette, that mean he was spying on all the houses and he had just seen me in pajamas. And if he was starting a fire, the whole park could go up in flames and the houses too. Australia in the summer can be very dangerous, and bushfires damage homes, wildlife, and nature and kill many, many people. I ran inside and slammed the door. My father then yelled at me for making such a loud noise and waking him up. I apologize, but didn't tell him what was going on just in case I was being overly paranoid. I continued to stand with the back door shut and locked, but watched to see what the man was doing. I saw the lighter once more, and then the end of a cigarette light up. He was smoking. I could now see my cat was staring at him too, and her fur was all puffed up, and after reading posts like this, I didn't want him to hurt her, along with the fact that in my area, many animals and humans are killed and harmed by people, whacked out on drugs, and gangs are just stupid scenes, trying to have fun and hurting innocent animals. So I decided to go outside and get her. I ran out and picked up my cat as I was almost inside. I, I, I turned to see what the man was doing. I could see the whites of his eyes. He was staring right at me. I froze for a moment and then started to go back into the house quickly and quietly. But before I could even get my body halfway through the door, the man lunged out of the tree and onto my back fence. He threw the cigarettes at my other cat who had now climbed out of a flower pot and was hissing. He missed that my cat is fine. I ran inside and locked the door. The man proceeded to jump into my backyard and bolt for my cat. Luckily, my cat ran through the cat door, and my other cat was still in my arms. I put a large, heavy box in front of the cat door to block it. I had once again woken up my dad for being so, so noisy. He came out yelling at me and telling me to go to my fucking room and shut up, as he had work early in the morning. I softly apologized, as all I could manage was a small squeak from being so scared and I didn't want to piss him off further. I told him to look out the back, but not to open the door. He looked at me like I was insane, probably thinking that there was some kind of small rodent outside that frightened me or attacked the cats. He made an annoyed groan and went to have a look. As soon as he looked outside, he froze. Without looking at me, he told me to call the police and see if I can get my neighbors, one being a cop and the other being a terrifying large man who could kill someone with his bare hands. I called the cops while sprinting to my neighbor's house and telling them what was happening. When I came back, my dad was yelling at the guy and telling him to fuck off out of there before the cops came or my dad decides to kill him himself. Now, just some quick info. My dad, my dad is a scary ass man. Tall, muscular, and ex-army. Nobody fucks with him. But this guy, this insane guy, just stared at him and slowly pulled a knife from his boot and started cutting my screen door, making a hole to try and get through. My screen door has bars on it and the man cannot fit through them. Yet there he was, half his body through the hole trapped by the bars trying to open the glass sliding door, yelling at my father about how he'd never see me again and the awful things he and his friends would do to me. By this point, one of my neighbors, the cop, had gone into the park with his large German Shepherd and Taser and was planning on jumping over my fence and ambushing the guy. Just as he was about to do this, the police I called arrived and barged past my father, myself, and the, and the other neighbor. They then proceeded to tell the man to step away from the door and drop his knife. The man turned away and tried to bolt, but before he could, my neighbor's dog tackled him to the ground and bit him, allowing the cops to arrest the guy. They put him into the car but he just kept staring at me the whole time, never taking his eyes off me. I, I felt so violated and vulnerable. They took our statements and that's, that's all that's happened. He's in police custody and we're waiting to see what will happen next. My dad told me that when he looked outside the first time, he saw the man trying to look through our windows with his pants on the ground. He could have possibly been taken a whiz or well, the other obvious thing, I was and still am very shaken up by this event, and I've gone to stay with my aunt for the night, so I don't have to be in my house. So, creepy tree climbing maniac, 
I hope we never ever meet again.